I didn't really have anything, you know, I didn't have much. I didn't have a lot of money. And I used to look at my life, oh, my life is shit. Now I look at my life and I think, oh, my life is amazing. Like, my life is better and better every day. I don't even think I could work a nine to five. I've tried it, like, multiple times. I just suck at it. I have an online coaching business where we train people how to get fit and healthy. That's what I did to build up a lot of my money. You have to be constantly working on the business. And mm -hmm. I like real estate more because it's so passive. How much did you buy it for? All in all, with the fees included, I bought it for 85K. Madness. <laughs> Corey, what's your favorite property investment strategy? I'd say my favorite is BRR. So buying the property with cash, fixing it up, and then pulling all my money out. The reason being is because you can just keep recycling over and over again. So rather than putting your money in and it being stuck for five to 10 years, sometimes even longer, you can grow your portfolio faster. Yeah. There's nothing that makes me happier as well than being like, Oh, I've got 10 houses, but I've still got the same amount of cash that I started with or more. Well, mm. more as well. Mm. So. What was your most recent buy refurbishment finance project? So the most recent one, a house I bought in Swansea. And I got that one in auction. But instead of actually going to the auction, mm. I offered outside of auction. Interesting. Pre yeah. or post? It was pre-auction. Yes. What had happened was the guy, he was dying and he was getting ready to pass the house. Well, he wanted to sell the house so he can give the money over in inheritance to his kids. And somebody had bought the house for 120 grand. But what had happened was because the house was next to a Chinese takeaway, Halifax or some high street mortgage lender, they wouldn't lend against yeah, it. Yeah. So they had to pull out. And then this guy was in a situation there where he was kind of desperate to sell the house. So he put it up for auction. And because I had a relationship with the estate agent, he sort of told me how much he was looking for. So I said, hey, if you wanna get this wrapped up quick, I've got the cash, I'll give you the cash now, and let's just not even let it go to auction because what you don't want is for it to go to auction, fail at auction, right. Right. and now all of a sudden it's blacklisted. Yes. And then you get everybody in their dog trying to come in then and offer a stupid price. Mm -hmm. And that house is just not gonna get sold. So let me take the risk on it. I'll take it on and I'll find somebody to mortgage it. How much did you buy it for? All in all with the fees included, I bought it for 85K. Madness. And that's yeah. in Swansea? Yeah. And I just remortgaged it now and it came back as, I'm, I think it came back as 120 something. So I managed to pull 86K out. So, so you pulled all your money out and a grand. That's a grand, yeah. Do you think that's the the way forward pre-auction? Is that like something that you're going to really go for and focus on? Do you think it was just, it just fell on your lap as it happened? I think because I've got such good connections with estate agents, they, they show me a lot of the good deals, mm -hmm. which makes it really easy for me to come in and offer. The only thing I would do different now, I think, is it's just taken too long. So I have to wait six months to get my money out. So mm. what I'm thinking about doing now is rather than doing that, I may come to you and say, hey, I found this really good deal. Will you give me a bridging loan on it, right? Mm -hmm. Or something like that, because that way then I could potentially do three BRR deals. Right. And in six months time then, I get to do it times three, right? Exactly. So, so you, it's quicker. So, so you've been using your own money and you've been putting your money into a property, cash, pushing the value up, refinancing it, getting your money back and then going again. Yeah. But what you're saying is, by doing that, you can only do one deal at a time. Yeah. Oh, mate, it would 100% make sense for you to use bridging finance. That's why I've been focusing on doing renter essays to get that fast pound in as well. Yeah. Because normally what I was doing was I'd buy the house and then I just I just go away. I, so I went to like Canada for six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just had a good time out there, came back and then did the work to the house and then remortgaged it in six months time. Mm -hmm. But now I'm thinking, oh, if I actually just use that six months and I focus on rent to essays, right. rent to housing associations and things like that. Are you full-time in property? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is your job? This is your full-time income? Yeah, yeah. The only other thing I do occasionally, I don't do it as much anymore. I have an online coaching business where we train people how to get fit and healthy. So nice. a lot of entrepreneurs come to me when they want to get in the best. So that's kind of like your background. Yeah, that's what I did to build up a lot of my money. It's good, but you have to be constantly working on the business. And mm -hmm. I like real estate more because it's so passive. This is pretty much my full-time thing. What was it that made you get into property and how did you get the courage to take the lunge initially 
I read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad like a lot of people do, right? It just made so much sense because I've never really wanted to work a nine to five at all. Yeah. And I, I don't even think I could work a nine to five. I've tried it like multiple times and I just suck at it, you know? I have a really short attention span and I don't enjoy doing things that I don't like doing. So sometimes I see people in Tesco's or Subway and I think, how can you do that? Because chances are that they're probably not enjoying making a Subway sandwich like a hundred times a day. I take my hat off to them. So I think that's awesome that you can suck it up and do that. But for me, I was like, I need to find a way to make money without working because work working like that is not for me. It's something I don't enjoy. It just made a lot of sense to buy a house because it's gonna go up in value and it gives you money without you having to do anything. So I can literally be in Japan or I can be in Australia or I can be in America. Mm. If I'm in America, I gotta be careful because you know how expensive it is in the States, right? But I'm still getting paid while I'm out there and I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So that to me has always been really exciting. What year did you do your first BRR? I think it was 2020. Mm, so just a few years ago. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And where where was that then? That was in Swansea. Is that where all your properties are? Yes, that's where all my properties that I own are. Yeah. So your first property, how did you find it? What happened? Well, I came to your pound crash course. You did a thing where you was saying to people, "Oh, go out and find a deal, mm. and if the deal is good, I'll give you three hundred quid." Yeah, I remember. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I still do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to yeah. encourage people to find to find deals because otherwise people just sit there going on Instagram where I'm like, no, find something good. And if it's good, I'll give you 300 quid. And then everyone's like, all right, that's, but they don't realize this 300 quid is nothing. Yeah. If you just play out and, and, and look, and even in the room, if you find a deal in the room, but it turns out to not really work out or it, it's not actually a great deal, but you've got the skills in how to find it, you can make, Three grand, 30 grand, 300 grand from one day. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was quite mad in the end because I was like, um, I was thinking, oh, he shafted me there if you're going to give me 300 quid because normally you're supposed to get three grand for it. But obviously I didn't know Did that. Did you actually get 300 quid? Well, you offered me the 300 quid, but I said no. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah. So, so you-, you found a deal and I was like, that's great. I'll give you 300 quid. And you were like, you're all right, mate. <laughs> I don't want you 300 quid. Is that yeah, what happened? Yeah, so you give me a bit of an odd time, actually, because I got up on stage, I was trying to pitch it. You were like, right, your pitch was atrocious, <laughs> but I like the deal. Here's 300 quid. Do you want to take it or not? I think you put the countdown on, and then there was two people with me. They didn't find the deal, but they, they wanted to sell it. But I found the deal, and I, you just paired us all up. And I was like, nah, man, we're not selling this. I found it. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. You guys can do what you want. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you, you buy it? Yeah, I did, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you found your first deal at the crash course. Yeah. And I tried to buy it off you for 300 quid and you said no thanks and bought <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, nah, I said nah. Because I knew it was good because you wanted to buy it. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to sell for 300 quid. It doesn't make any sense. And then I- How much did you pay for it? I think I paid 60 grand for it. 60 grand in Swansea? Yeah. And then It's, and a, then co- it's a cottage. <laughs> a cottage. And what happened? I bought it, put some tenants in. Then I went to Canada. And I worked out there in, uh, as a PT for a bit. I did some traveling. Six months went by and I was like, right, let's get this house valued now. I, I didn't actually do any work to it. I can't remember why I didn't do any work. I just didn't really need much work doing it. And I, I, I think I was going to leave it until the end. But because I wasn't there, I was just like, oh, let's just get someone in and see how much it's worth. And they come in and they, they, I couldn't believe it. They said, oh, it's worth 120. So we'll give you 80K. What? Yeah. And um, I actually- no refurb. You no refurb, no. Were they not asking you, were the lenders not saying, how did you get it for 60? Well, I weren't even there at the property. So now, like I've done the BRR course now mm. and the way I did my one now was different in Swansea. So I was I was preparing a folder and everything and meeting yeah, the guy and shaking right. his hand. Hey man, how's your day going? You know, try not to ruin it for you. Here's my house. Look at the work I've done, you know, painted the walls, everything. These <laughs> yeah. walls used to be yellow. They're white now, you know, just making sure I'm dotting my I's and crossing my T's. But with this one, I wasn't even in the country. So the tenants let them in. And- um, You got a bit lucky with, with that one. You did, yeah. <laughs> That's why I tried to give you 300 pound for it. <laughs> why you want 300 pound when you make 60 grand? Exactly, yeah. So, but all in all, I, I I got all my money out and I got 10 grand back. And I think I make 300 pound or 200 pound a month off that house now. How much is the rent on it? I think they pay 620. They're actually DSS tenants. Right. I was going to have them come in, see, you know, because they're DSS tenants, they would be able to get the EPC written high. Yeah. Because remember when that was a thing, when they were like, oh, if the EPC rating is below this, you're going to be forced to put it up. So I was doing my, trying to be 
proactive. So did you manage to get money from the government towards the... Nah, the tenants rang up and they said, oh, we're not doing that now. You've got to ring up next year and you'll see what sort of grants we're doing then. Okay. But I'm kind of glad because I don't know if you heard this. I'm sure you did. When the government is coming out and putting these solar panels on the house, which yep. is the way to boost the value. If you got that solar panel on the house, because you don't own the solar panel and you go to remortgage the house, the lenders won't let you. Almost a bit tricky from the government, isn't it? Because they're coming to help. Every every time the government come in to help, there's normally some big, massive flaw. Yeah, beware of the handouts. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I'm glad it didn't because that imagine- That really I, hurt you then. Yeah, well, I would have stuck the solar panel on the roof and been like, yeah, I've done a really good job here. Like I've, you know, I've outsmarted the system or whatever. And then they come to remortgage it and then it's a kiss goodbye to that money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. you've got to be careful, man. It's like help to buy and then you can't buy another house. Most of the government schemes where they give you a gift, but then you've got to pay it back and mm. now there's all these red tape. Mm. So, wow. Yeah, nothing comes, good. Nothing. even if something's free, it always comes with a price. You yeah. just don't know what it is yet. First BRI you found at the crash course. Yeah. Mate, that is mad. Yeah. And then what was really- We need to go and visit that house. I need to come out and do a yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. I bet we can find the footage. Because it would have probably been recorded when you first got on stage. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't Make it? Into a little mini documentary or something. But that yeah. is mad. How did you feel when you bought it for 60 grand cash, hard earned money that you'd saved, presumably through your coaching, and then you got it refinanced six months later at 120? Mm. How did you feel? I was very skeptical at first, right? So when I came to your crash course, I'd already been to a free event before, and I remember them saying, oh, I invest in property now because prices is going to go through the roof soon and it's going to get so crazy that you're not even going to be able to get a mortgage because we're in this cycle now where it's the 18.5 year property cycle and this is the beginning so make sure you buy a house this year and I was taking loads of notes getting loads of free information and everything and then at the end they were like oh yeah sign up and I was like nah because I've got all this free information now so I don't need to sign up but I never did anything with it mm -hmm. and then you know and then like a year went by and things started going up and I was like, oh man, like I got to do something instead of just going to these courses, mm -hmm. I need to actually take action and do something, right? Yeah. So then when I went to your course, I was like, I've got to do, actually do something. So I ended up investing and I bought the BRR course Yeah. because I was like, well, this clearly works, right? And then I did that BRR. I was like, right, okay, so I'm going to do another one now. You remember Gav and Mitch? Mm -hmm. Well, I met them in Australia years ago. They came back to the UK after I'd done your course and I went to see them and everything. And I told them that I'd been in your course because they could see I was buying properties and things. And they were like, how was the course? And they were like really excited about it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's really good, man. But just be careful, man, because you know, at the end of it, they, they're gonna try and get you in into something where it's really expensive, you know? And I was still like very wary, yeah. you know? I don't like to trust people. I'm like, oh, look, you know, looking for the catch, yeah. you know? And they went, oh, okay. And they went to the course. And when I seen them again, they were like, yeah, we just paid 12 grand to join the academy. I was like, you guys are nuts. I can't believe you did that. I told you, man, you gotta be careful. I, I was like, you haven't got no money or nothing. They were like, yeah, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do rent to rent. And I didn't even know what rent to rent was at the time, because I just knew about your BRR strategy. I was like, that doesn't sound legit. That sounds stupid. You know what I mean? You guys are like, but like at the same time, I was congratulating them because I was thinking, oh, I kind of want a bit of that, where they've just taken the plunge mm. and they've really gone for it. So whether like, they were right or wrong. I really respected that they did that. I was like, oh, maybe it's time that I put, you know, really bet on myself rather than just buying a BRR course. Should I have joined the academy? And I was like, nah, well, I was off to Canada anyway. And I remember I went over their house because I stayed at their house the night before I flew. I'll never forget, they were on the phone to someone. They were like, yeah, we've got an investor. He's going to pay three grand for a deal. I was like, I was like, and he spat my water out. I was like, three grand, you're having a laugh. And they were like, no, 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 he's gonna pay three grand. Like, I was like, okay. So I was listening in and they confirmed it and then they put the phone down. And I, I was like, well, you've not made three grand there. And they were like, yeah, we have. I'm like, nah, you, you only make three grand when you make it, right? Do you know what I mean? Like he'd ever pay to the phone, he's probably not gonna pay. But they were so confident that he was gonna pay. And then five minutes later, lo and behold, they had three grand in the bank account. 
And I couldn't believe it. I was like, how did you just do that? Because for me to get three grand over a phone call doing the PT stuff, I'm going to be on the phone for an hour yeah. and I'm going to be objection handling and it's, a, it's it can get messy. But they did it and they didn't have no objections and the phone call lasted about five, six minutes. It was so casual. And I knew that I'd made a mistake, but I, I was committed to going to Canada. So I was like, oh, let me just go to Canada. This is obviously the thing I need to be doing now. And let me see what happens over here. And then three months later, I'm looking on YouTube and I see Gavin Mitch's face on Winners on a Wednesday. And the minute I see it, I get a phone call. I pick it up. It's Mitch. I'm like, Mitch, what's this? You're making 30 grand a month. And they're like, oh yeah, we made 40 grand last month. We, we made more now. That was filmed a while back. And that's when I knew then, I was like, oh man, I should have just gone all in. Mm. And I booked the plane back to the UK and uh, I rang Ibby up <laughs> and I said, oh, I want to join. And that's what's brought me here today. Wow. Yeah. What a story, mate. What do you think the lessons are from that story? There's a few lessons from that story. The first one is I used to be very pessimistic and I used to try and cherry pick information and I would think, oh, if I go to this pound crash, because I, I went to two pound crash courses before I took any action. And I used to think, right, well, he's given away all his best information at this pound crash course because obviously this is the one where you need, I need to see that you know what you're talking about. Otherwise I'm not going to invest. So there's going to be good information. So if I just go there with my notebook and I take notes, I'm going to be able to get a bunch of free information for a pound. And then I'm going to walk away like almost, almost laughing. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I got all the free information. It's almost like, ah, oh, you didn't catch me. But when I look at that now, I'm like, oh, that's very negative and small thinking. Because if I'd have just gone all in and invested originally, then I would have been more likely to take action. I would have surrounded myself with more like-minded people. And I would have made that money back anyway. But it's like, you get what you put in. Mm -hmm. So even though I did this big BRR and I was over the moon with it, Gav and Mitch were able to have more success than me because when they went, they went all in. Yeah. And they weren't thinking negatively. They were thinking, well, what's worst case scenario? It doesn't work out. But 12 grand is actually not that much money to, to me now mm -hmm. and to, to a lot of people, especially people in the academy. So that would be the first lesson was stop thinking small mm. and also stop being negative. Yeah. And then the second lesson I think would be to just be more positive, you know, and, and stop looking at things in a negative light because you can look at anything negatively, can't you? And you can point the finger and you can go, oh, that's a cult or, oh, they're never going to make money doing that or oh, that's illegal. Yeah, there's people who are going to say them, but it's who you choose to listen to. And rather than just listening to one side and being like, it's crap or it's good, just be a bit more open-minded and maybe dip your toe in and give it a try. Yeah. Be more open-minded and stop listening to the negative. Do you think that they're quite skeptical maybe in Wales? Are they a bit more closed-minded than people in London maybe? I would say so. I would say that people in, in, in Wales would be a lot more pessimistic mm. towards it they're smaller communities as well and they and i think if you maybe you should come down and do a crash course there you have a well, i did one in cardiff oh did you what i found in cardiff was that there was a lot of investors that came that were very old school mm. in their mindset yeah all they knew was save money work hard as a farmer or something buy a house rent it out and then do the same over again. Yeah. So when you start talking about rent to rents and raising finance, and there is generally, it's a lot of resistance. It's like, well, what, huh? how does that work? And that's the thing. It's easy for other, other people to get sucked into it because Wales is smaller and it's a more tight knit community. You know, you're gonna go to a crash, say I drive from Swansea to Birmingham, which I did to go to your crash course. If I come home and I tell people about it, and they are in that mindset. And that's the first person I talk to after coming. And then I talk to somebody else and they're the same. Mm. It's almost like um, a virus, isn't it? It's yeah. spread and the negativity spread. And it's easier if you were to speak to somebody and they were positive about it and you kept getting positive. Then by the fifth person you spoke to, if they were negative about it, 
mm-hmm. you would you would just ignore that. You're like, oh, well, I spoke to these other people, but most people I spoke to about it were like, oh, be careful. Well, that's what you would like to gather myths. Yeah, 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 exactly. Go to the crash course, but leave your wallet at home. <laughs> they might yeah. try and sell you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what we yeah. And it's like, okay. Yeah, cool. I don't care. Leave. Yeah, leave it. Like it's so interesting because you got Apple Pay now. You don't need the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's so interesting though because yeah, people do sometimes feel like that. Don't they? Like, oh, they're going to be tricked or they're going to be. But if you go to any uh, Sainsbury's, yeah, there's stuff for sale. And if you like it, buy it. And if you don't, don't. Mm. Or if, if you go into a clothes stop, yeah, there, there's offers on and there's sales, and you can have a look and you can buy. You can not. It's interesting but how skeptical people are and how much they think a few grand is. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a few grand. I mean, you're making, just from your rent to rents, which you've not even talked about, you're making a few grand. What, what do you make on your rent to rent properties? Uh, I'm making 4K a month easier. 4K profit. Them. Yeah. I mean, if you add everything up, I'm making around about 10 grand a month now. Yeah. So that's almost my academy membership each month. It's a thing with money, you know, you've got to actually be willing to let it go and put it out there in order to receive it back in abundance, yeah. right? Yeah. And you do a funny thing when you're at the course and you're like that stroking a little yeah, bit of yeah, money, yeah. not wanting to let it go yeah. out into the universe. Being a reservoir, not a pond. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. It took I, me a long time to become a reservoir and I needed real life examples like Gavin and Mitch. Yeah. Otherwise, because you know we'd work together doing sales in Australia for like two years. I was like the number one salesperson in the whole of Australia selling what I was selling. Like there was one week where I sold 80 in one week and there was like a day when I did 30 sales in one day. So I know all the strategies as well. So as soon as I hear somebody trying to use them on me, I clam up. Right. But now I've, I've let go of that now and I'm like, well, I actually appreciate a good sales pitch now. And I know that if it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying to sell something to someone as long as you have genuine intent that it's the right thing for them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And interested about Gavin Mitch as well because when you see other people winning in your community, people that you know, it does put a bit of a fire under your ass, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was like, if they're able to do that, yeah, then why why wouldn't I be able to? And then I, I was like, okay, then I'll just come home and do it. And I will be honest, it was easier for me to invest with you because I'd made 10 grand doing that by refurbished refinance. So at that point, I'm like- And when you say you'd made 10 grand, you actually made 60, but you got on the refinance, you got all your money back, a free house, Plus 10 grand. Yeah. So my way of looking at it was like, I'm going to give that back to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because, you know, like, and then if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. But I know that the strategies do work. But you still, you still did the Barry Furniture Finance course, which was two grand still. Right? No, because I only did the online training. But still, all right, it's a grand. Yeah. But you still did something. But even, <laughs> you say that, but I only did it as well because you did the raffle. So you did a raffle. Oh, you won it? Yeah, I won it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I was like, there's no way I can walk away without getting something, innit? And yeah, then, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I bought that, yeah. But okay, but even though, you, even though you didn't invest, you still had some pretty thorough training. Yeah, I think that was the first one I went to. Yeah. And then the second one I went to was when I found this deal. Mm-hmm. So I'd already had a little bit of training prior to going to the Birmingham one. Yeah. But I still didn't sign up to the academy. How are you finding deals now then? What, what, what are you doing? Are you speaking to agents? Are you going to auctions or you leaflet drop in. I've done a lot of co-sourcing. I'm a people person and I get along with people really well. I like building relationships and adding value. Mm-hmm. So I'm the kind of person where I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet people and I'm going to build relationships. And I get a lot of people bring me deals then. And they're like, oh, can you find an investor? I'm like, I know just the guy. How many deals have you sold? I sold 22 deals now. <laughs> Mate, that's insane. Yeah. You've got your... Buy, refurbish, refinance your portfolio, mm. which you're snowballing, mm. uh, which is incredible. Multiple properties there. You've got your rent to rents, again, multiple properties, how many, four rent to rents. Then you've got your deal selling, 22 deals. Yeah. How much money have you made, do you reckon, in deal selling then? Or how much on average do you charge as a fee? Well, normally it's three grand, but because I've co sourced a lot of them, I'll get, you know, 1,500. Yeah. Yeah. And I was given a few cheeky cheap ones away to in the begin with in, to build initially. your yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bit, you know that's still more than paid for your academy membership yeah 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 100 percent. so i've got my i got my academy membership back tenfold what's the academy like how is it different from the free you know when you said you thought that all the value was going to be at the crash course and then after that i've taught everything it's quite not quite the case is it no 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 i mean it's a network of people you you meet and i think 
I, I will be honest, I think you get out of it what you put into it. So yeah. I, I wouldn't just say, oh yeah, join the academy and it's going to be magic the easiest thing in the world to sure. become like, what you've got to do is you've got to actually put yourself out there. Like every time we go to the dinners, I'll put myself on stage and I'll share my success, but it's very easy to not do that. Yeah, It's easy to just sit back and enjoy the food and enjoy the drinks. Yeah, Even though I've made my money back, I'm like, how can I get the most out of this? Right. And the only way to get the most out of it is by meeting people and networking and mm. asking people's opinions on things, being interested in people, building relationships because you never know when that person is going to change your life yeah. so it's not just about having you on the team it's about everyone else everybody has reached that point in their life where they're willing to hand over 12k for training so these people are all like-minded people instead of yeah. spending your time with the naysayers you're now spending your time with people who are winning who really want to win yeah and we all want each other to win yeah. I would say that is a very important aspect of it, the network, the coaching and the mentoring and everything like that. There's a lot of value in there. And I think it, it's like anything, isn't it? If you want to be a professional, you've got to tr treat it serious. Whatever that looks like, you're not going to be able to just have a dip your toe in, do a few viewings and then expect to, to make a load of money. You've got to really commit. And the last thing I will say is just putting, just giving away the 12K is massive. It's not just me giving you 12K, it's me investing in myself. And that's the best, like you say, that's the best investment you'll make. Now it's real. More of it's you to take action because like I told you, I'd been to courses previously mm. and I thought, oh, I've got all this good information and I'd write everything down, but I didn't do anything. Mm. So what's the point? You're literally just wasting your time. Yeah. But you will damn do something if you've got 12K in it because yeah. that's 12K of energy. Yeah. you had to make and now yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you're not going to put 12 grand on and not do anything are you? probably not you'd like to think <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> you'd like to think so what would you say has been the key thing you've sold 22 deals mm. you've got BRRs you've got rent to rents what's the key thing that you've really learned I know you've learned probably loads of through doing it through coaching but what would you say has the biggest been the biggest takeaway the biggest lesson for you that you'd like to pass on Invest in yourself, not just in mentorship for real estate and things like that. You would, might also want to consider investing in mentorship for your mindset. That seems like a really strange thing to invest in, but if you can just fix your shitty mindset, then you'll go quite far because you'll mm. stop holding yourself back. I think a lot of people have got a negative attitude yeah. and it stops them. It closes them off from opportunities. Yeah. So I invested in my mindset so Did you? I, yeah. Did you read books, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah, What, yeah. what favourite book on mindset? Asking It Is Given by Ask, Jerry and Esther Hicks. Asking It Is Given. Yeah, that's Rich it. Dad Poor Dad, you mentioned, got you started with the investment stuff. Yeah, those, I've read those repeatedly. I've read loads of books. You just need to find the right books for you and then re repeatedly read them, I think. Yeah. When I was about 18, 19 years old, I turned my car into a mini university. Yeah. And just got loads of CDs at the time. Now it would be easier because you could use Spotify or connect your car but I just listened to Jim Rohn Tony Robbins there was just so much and I think that really changed the way that I just thought my perspective my outlook on life mm. and I think you're right that is yes the key skills to be able to be successful in property are important but the mindset needs to go along with it for sure I used to look at my life and I used to think oh my life is shit I didn't really have anything you know I didn't have much I didn't have a lot of money and I used to look at my life oh my life is shit now I look at my life and I think, oh, my life is amazing. Like my life is better and better every day. My life was amazing then, but I just looked at it the wrong way. Mm. I was looking for the negative stuff. And now I feel like, honestly, like if I were to lose everything tomorrow, my reaction to it would still be thank you. Yeah. Because life is like a blessing and it's amazing and it only comes around once. So I say, stop looking for the bad stuff. And if you are having a bad time and if you do have a shitty mindset where it's a glass half empty instead of a glass half full, literally go take a Tony Robbins course before you jump yeah. into anything else. Because that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. And um, I, I agree with that. Some people aren't even ready to come to the property investors crash course. Yes. No, go read a Tony Robbins book first. Yeah. Then come meet me when you're ready. Yeah.
It's been a real pleasure having you on Winners on a Wednesday. Thanks, I really appreciate it. And I'm really uh, inspired and it's just so good to hear your story. I, I loved hearing your story. So thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, and I, I wish you, you all the best moving forward. Thanks.